All right, now Poco X3 Pro. It's been a while that we've been making a lot of custom ROM videos for this device and this device continues to amaze us by the amazing custom ROMs that it is getting. Now it's time for Rise Droid's latest review. This is the latest update that I installed a couple of days back. And since then, I've been using this update on the Poco X3 Pro. I've tried gaming, I've tried benchmarks and my experience is a mixed bag. So this is a complete review of the latest Rise Droid update based on Android 13 for the Poco X3 Pro. But before we get into the details, if you haven't already, please subscribe because it doesn't cost you anything and it really motivates us to make amazing content like this. And without further ado, hello awesome people, welcome to Phone Ops. my name is Kalash, let's get going. Now let's see what we have here. We have the Poco X3 Pro running the latest Rise Droid as I mentioned. So if we actually go to say about phone, as you can see, it says Rise UI 4.0. Now, custom ROMs have gotten to a point wherein they do feel much more complete and polished and stuff like that. So let's see what we have here. We have this particular build number over here, Google account, phone number, device information. Okay. Now the Rise OS version over here is 13. This, 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 this. It's a very, very long and it's official. So it is stable is what I can say. And it definitely comes with Android with the latest security patch. So that is a good thing. So at least on the software part, you are taking care of. Now let's talk about the security issues here and there if we have any. So if you go to the say Google Play Store, as you can see, device is certified, safety net passes, wide wine L1 is present. Now, whenever you install a new custom ROM, be it a Poco X3 Pro, a Xiaomi, Redmi, any phone, the first few things that you should always take care of is Wideban L1 because of course you're going to consume content sooner or later on your device. So L1 is important for that. You're going to use a lot of banking applications for your financial transactions. So you need to have safety net passing. At the same time, you need to ensure that the device is certified. Now, once these three basic checks are done, then you can move on to installing the ROM and trying other things. And that's why we are here to give you the information to exactly you should install it or not. Now, the moment you boot into this particular ROM, you will see it is a very, very basic and pixel-esque UI that you will see. To the left, of course, you have Google Feed, which since Android 13 has been working great. So no complaints there. A very, very clean layout over here. If you long press over here, you will see that you have home settings and the launcher itself, the default launcher, does allow you to perform a lot of customizations. The launcher here is Sushi Launcher, weird name there. Now you can enable different icon packs, icon size customization. You do have a ton of home screen customization. App drawer can be customized. Along with this, you can customize your recents and you can select what all buttons you want over here. At the same time, memory info can be enabled. Now, background opacity is something that you can go ahead and change as well. If you go to miscellaneous, you will see that you have a ton of option over here, including home screen rotation and stuff like that. You can restart the launcher as well, as you can see. Now, if you go to the multitasking menu, they have a very, very different look compared to AOSP Android or MIUI. So this is where custom ROMs come into the picture. They are between the stock ROM and pure Google is where you get a very, very sweet middle ground with a lot of customization options. Now, as you can see over here, you have the screenshot button over here. You have this app lock button over here. You have this Google lens button over here. As you can see, you can copy text from that and then you can kill all the applications over here. So it looks really, really neat. As you can see, visual matches and stuff like that. Very, very nice. Even at the top over here, you do have multiple options like multi-screen tasking or split screen tasking. Freeform window, well, yeah. Floating windows on uh, custom ROMs is always a welcome addition. Now, as you can see over here, a very, very bland and basic information system as far as the status bar is concerned. If you go to the edit menu, you will notice that you do have quite a lot of tiles over here and that is what Rise Droid is known for. You know, ROMs like CR Droid, back in the day, Resurrection Remix, a lot of these ROMs were famous because they used to give you a lot of customization. And that is what Rise Droid is aiming to do as well. Let's quickly have a look at these features that are available over here. So, you know, you have this internet and all these basic options available. But apart from this, you have things like FPS info on the go. You can enable the compass in the status bar or the quick tiles. And then you can select the preferred network from here, dual camera setting, refresh rate setting, Dolby Atmos, calculator. <laughs> so there are a lot of options available over here and that actually, you know, helps you to experience a lot of things 
from the quick tiles itself which in my opinion is a good thing now as you can see the brightness or yeah so it works great as well no problem there at all ambient brightness for me has been working great if you talk about the dialer well the dialer in question is the stock google dialer you do get google contacts and google messaging as well along with this if you go to the camera application surprise surprise you do get the leica camera which means you get a full blown mi ui camera so if you say you go to video you will see that you have at least 4k 30 fps and i've tested video it works fine you have all these additional features if you go to portrait mode let's see here bam it works right so you know all these leica options are present and the latest camera apk being available in an aosp rom for poco xiaomi or redmi users is a very very neat addition now talking about the app drawer it is semi transparent not much in the app drawer yes the apps installed on this rom as always are very very few so you don't really have a lot of memory hogging apps installed which is a good thing in my opinion now once again let's actually go to settings but before that let me see if these buttons are clickable okay okay it does take me to battery here uh yeah that's about it the battery button is clickable and the clock i believe oh okay it went to sleep all right let's go ahead and unlock this baby right here and let's see yeah okay so these shortcuts are clickable which in my opinion is a good thing so you have your device name your owner name over here network and internet all the standard stuff going on but if you go to personalization once again you know custom rom it will help you to customize your experience which is a good thing so you have this about us at the top which i think is a good touch because at the bottom by the time you reach the bottom nobody checks that so you have button customization over here now i'm not going to go through each and every option because i really don't want to make this a 20 minute video and bore you guys but while i'm scrolling through the ui you can actually have a look and ask me questions in the comment section right now if you go to the lock screen you do have a lot of options in the lock screen as well now moving on you do have miscellaneous options over here so you do have game space which in my opinion is a good thing a very very elaborate game space over here you have google services parallel space now this is a neat addition you can disable google services if you are paranoid about tracking or anything of that sort scarlet services okay there is something called as scarlet manager scarlet system boost scarlet aggressive idle mode wow okay so this is pretty neat as well i did pay attention to this while playing around but unlock higher fps if you play the poop g game maybe it will be good for you but swipe to screenshot let's see here does it work okay for now it's not working pocket detection is present weather settings not really that important but as you can see you know moving on you have things like navigation quick settings sound status bar customization is pretty amazing and the best part about this particular rom is that the entire user interface is monet themed of course is android 13 and it's working very very fluid and very very cohesive so that in my opinion is pretty good now let's actually go to the general settings of this particular device if you actually go to battery you will see that you have thermal profiles over here so you can select from a host of options which are benchmark browser camera dialer gaming streaming so all those options are present you do have adaptive battery directly from google which i think is a good option battery temperature is being displayed design battery capacity current battery capacity is more than the design battery capacity just custom rom things guys uh battery usage has been pretty good charging speeds have been pretty good so as far as performance is concerned this is not even on par with you know the stock rom that's probably because it's trying to balance a lot of things here So apart from battery if you actually go to security face unlock and fingerprint unlock is working absolutely okay right if you go to system you do have a ton of android 13 options available over here and they work absolutely fine so the boot times are good the camera application is miui based now let's talk about the benchmark numbers okay the first things first if you go to antutu benchmark which is always available 524109 Now this in my opinion is not a good score because Poco X3 Pro on stock rom scores 560000 so yeah not that great now let's actually go to google photos here and uh, let's see some screenshots for cpu throttle test and geekbench over here now you do have unlimited photos storage available so let's actually go to screenshots now as you can see a uh, 81% throttling so even though it's not giving you great performance the throttling is present 
एवरेज स्कोर वॉज वन एटी नाइन नाइन फिफ्टी वन सो नो नॉट दैट हाई नाउ द गीक बेंच स्कोर गीक बेंच सिक्स माइंड यू नाइन सिक्सटी सिक्स सिंगल कोर एंड टू सेवन फाइव जीरो मल्टी कोर सो ऑल इन ऑल इफ यू आस्क मी दिस रॉम गिव्स यू अ लॉ ऑफ कस्टमाइजेशन डिसेंट बैटरी बैकअप गुड चार्जिंग स्पीड security everything is covered media consumption everything is covered you get a good camera application and in casual gaming of 60 fps i played uh, you know apex legends mobile and uh, call of duty mobile my experience was pretty decent no major lags or stutters even in close fights and stuff like that i don't know why the benchmark numbers are low the phone doesn't heat up in gaming and overall it is giving me a pretty good experience so there you have it guys rise droid in my opinion is something you should definitely try on poco x3 pro if you're not a hardcore gamer and you're not trying to beat any records so if you're going to use a rom or kernel which gives you the best performance probably your device will overheat and it might break so if you get a rom which is not giving you top notch performance but okay performance in gaming i think you should give it a try let me know in the comment section what do you think about this video i'll see you in the next one keep smiling take care goodbye